So let's just look at this for a minute. You, you can divorce yourself of culture if you want to. We are not going to divorce ourselves of culture. We think part of the reason the church is here is to speak life into a dark culture. All right? So are we supposed to tell you who to vote for? No, but are, are we supposed to encourage you that you should read your Bible and compare the platforms and decide who you're going to vote for, right? Uh, at a high level, but at a, even at a lower level, this is a different thing I'm asking you to do now because remember, mercy triumphs over judgment if you're a Christian. It's harder, though. It would have been way easier for David to just take his 400 men and slaughter those guys. And, and vengeance is sweet? I mean, no, because if vengeance had been taken out on you, you wouldn't be here right now. If we got what we deserved, we wouldn't be here. So again, how do you speak truth into that without acknowledging, you know, you still have to acknowledge that what they're doing is wrong, but you, you have to love your enemy. Basically what it comes down to is you have to be willing to pray for people that you don't agree with and pray that there will be a revival in their life and that God will put Christians in their path and that somehow by you living a life, maybe Hacksaw Ridge could help you understand this. You know how he was somebody who was persecuted badly and yet still stuck it out. He had courage to stay with his convictions. They ended up realizing not only are you not a coward, not only are you not weak, you're the bravest guy in the whole division. Yeah. Not what we thought initially. So we're expected to live this life of a different set of rules because we're walking that narrow road that leads to life. And there's a verse right there in Proverbs 24. Don't rejoice when your enemy falls. If you're saying, hey, did you see what happened to Cuomo this week? Now look, it wasn't a good week. He's one of the people who said the reason we're having good numbers in New York. Somebody said, God, what do you think? God, God has blessed you. And he said, oh, God didn't do it. We did it. Now, you would have went like this if you were standing nearby and say, oh, I don't want no lightning burns. You better be careful when you say something like that. That's saying, like, I could eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God's telling me I can't, but it doesn't matter what he thinks. I can do it. I do this all the time. I'm I'm going to try to say that you could get to a place where you're not exactly happy that he didn't have a great week. <laughs> the other guy also didn't have a good week, but he's a Christian. And he was blocked on Twitter because of an article that they put in their magazine that, they, that Twitter said was hate language. And all they did was state a fact about somebody in the government right now. So, look, if that's not sending alarm bells to you that focus on the family is getting blocked on one of the major platforms for hate speech, well, wake up. Wake up. There's a real plan going on here, but you're in a church that's been teaching on spiritual warfare since we started. So it's not a big surprise, right? It's not a surprise that pagan people s sacrifice children. We call that abortion today, but that's been going on for thousands of years. So what are you going to do? Scream at them or offer them an alternative, right? We talk about this all the time. This is not an easy verse. Don't rejoice when your enemy falls, and don't let your heart be glad when he stumbles. Boy, you got to fight that urge, don't you? And you really have to fight it on Facebook. And you really have to fight the snarky comments and the sarcasm, because when you do that, you're becoming the very thing you don't want to be because you're not having mercy. And I'm not saying this is easy, okay? Really, when I tell you this is graduate school <laughs> to be able to actually pray for your enemies. But Jesus didn't say it for no reason. It's not a theory. It's a better way to live that I don't have all this poison of unforgiveness constantly stoking through my system. I'm gonna end now, okay? Romans 12 says, beloved, don't avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. Make, you know, realize that it's going to try to take over you and don't give place to it. I know it's like an old King James language here. Give place to it for it's written, vengeance is mine and I will repay, says the Lord. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Wow, that's a tough one, isn't it? But this is it. Look, he said a new command I give you. This is in the Gospel of John. That you have to love one another as I have loved you. If he had just said love one another, that would have been way easier, wouldn't it? But we're supposed to love one another. And he said a new commandment. There's only 10. Now he gave us 11. He gave us number 11. So that's all I'm saying. Just watch the way you emote stuff that it really lines up with what Jesus is asking us to do. Or are we acting just as happy about the, the downfall of our enemies as the world is 
That's not what he asks us to do. Let's pray for them. Because if God appears to them, you know, they're going to change. <laughs> but if we're not praying for God to appear to them, then it's going to be that much harder, right? It's, I know you don't get a lot of amens with a message like this. But I just want to move forward in the Lord and not just keep recreating the patterns that have kept us stuck, right? So let's stand and let's just pray and just ask the Lord to help us get revelation to live a life that as mercy has been shown to us, we're at least willing to extend mercy to other people. That the Abigails in your life are coming and speaking to you and that if, if your temper has so hijacked your system and your, your anger and the things that you're listening to and watching are not allowing you to have some perspective and realize that, you know, you're not wrestling against flesh and blood. You're wrestling against a spirit that's got that other person under their control. So why not pray spiritually, Lord, lift the ban off of Governor Cuomo's mind because he probably never heard the gospel presented in a way that he could understand it. And I'm not saying, maybe he did, maybe he rejected it. Maybe he's still one of those people like the Apostle Paul when he was going to kill people in Damascus. But did God intervene? Yes. Nobody's far, too far away from God for him not to use. And if we stand before the Lord, he could ask us, well, did you ever pray for the guy? I mean, he's not even our governor, right? I'm afraid if I mention our governor that tomatoes will start coming at me. <laughs> and not as a gift for the next meal. <laughs> so we'll leave that one until next week. <laughs> that's Mike Hutchings. That's post-traumatic stress. So <laughs> That's a good segue. <laughs> Can we lift our hands? So, Lord, we, we surrender to the sovereignty of the relationship that flawed people like us are allowed to host the presence of a holy God. Like, wow, how does that even make sense that your holiness dwells in an unholy vessel other than that you love us? And we're sorry if we haven't yielded ourselves to your leading or if we've allowed things of the world to become more attractive. And we even know the song that says, the things of the world grow strangely dim in the light of your glory and your grace, Lord. So help us get back into that secret place of time with you. There's a, there's a verse in the Psalms that says, everything was too confusing until I came into the sanctuary. And then the attitude that I had outside got shifted so that we're lining up with your plans and your purposes for us, Father. We know that we're here for such a time as this. Even though we'll make mistakes because nobody's perfect, but, but we want to be people that are after your heart and not making just quick, flesh-driven decisions, but that we could pray at all times. Your word says that if we don't rule our spirit, we're like a city with the walls broken down. And we don't want to give any place to the enemy through hatred or unforgiveness or that, that, that vile thing that happens to us on the inside when we just dwell too long I'm wanting to hurt our enemies. You're telling us to speak a revival over them. So just by faith, Lord, we speak revival over those people that we disagree with, that you would make yourself real to them through us and through others, but also you visit people in the night. Just show up so that this culture can be shifted, not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. And we are your people who are called by your name. We choose to humble ourselves and pray, purpose to seek your face, turn from our wicked ways, and we know your promise is true, yes and amen, that you will hear from heaven and you will heal our land. In Jesus' name, amen. So we went a little over, but I don't recognize everybody here, so I do want to just give people a chance, if you don't know the Lord, to just say a prayer and invite the Lord to come into your life. We don't want it to be a real complicated thing, okay? It's not. You're not joining it up and committing yourself to anything other than wanting to know God in a, in a richer, deeper way. Not church. God. Church is awesome. When it's done right, it can be very hurtful when it's done wrong. But I'm asking you to put that aside and for a moment just say, like my wife and I did both separately, I can't believe that you would want a relationship with me because my life's a mess. But they're telling me it is. So what do I have to lose? That's how we both came in the kingdom. So if that's you and you don't know the Lord, can we just say a prayer out loud together, church? You agree with me? All right, so let's say it. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I heard about mercy today, that it triumphs over judgment. 
I know I have sin in my life. I don't want to be judged for that sin. I want the mercy of God to move in my life, to forgive me. So I acknowledge that sin right now. And I ask you to forgive me. Not be ruled by my emotions, but to be ruled by the truth of your word and the power of your Holy Spirit resident inside me. Give me the strength, Lord, to turn away from my old ways and to turn towards you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior today. You took the punishment that I deserved. And as you gave your life for me, I choose to give my life to you today. Thank you for your forgiveness, for saving me. Empower me now to follow you for the rest of my life and the promise of eternity thereafter. In Jesus' name, amen.